buy some raw resources, craft some goods, and make a profit, because today we have another day our video. Now, today's video will be a little bit different because I will be taking you through what it's like to live as a bulk goods trader in day our survival in the online mode. Uh, for the past couple months, since the end of December, I've been tracking all of the trades that I've made, all the things I've bought and sold, uh, and the different quantities, rates, all that good stuff. And uh, I think it's about time that I put together a video that just recaps kind of some insights and some, some different things that I've seen uh, from recording this data. Uh, so just real quickly, just to summarize what we'll go through, I'll go through which months I buy and sell the most in, uh, which items I buy the most of with net value and steel, and same thing for what I sell the most in net value of steel. Uh, then take a look at number of trades per month, uh, how many times I buy and sell, and then most trades by day of the week. And then finally, we're also going to take a quick look at uh, instead of buy uh, what's worth the most, look at what I buy in the most quantity, the largest quantity, and what I sell in the largest quantity. So those are just some quick and dirty uh, things that I've put together with this raw data. So with that being said, I think we can get into it. So if you're someone like me who's been playing the game for a while, or even if you're new to the game, uh, after a while, once you complete all the things that there are to really complete in the game, all the challenges, all the different quests, uh, kind of building yourself up as, as a character, uh, once you get to a certain point, there isn't too much left to do in the game other than to kind of turn it into a tycoon game. If it's still a game that you love, then a lot of players resort to buying and selling items, uh, mainly buying raw inputs, crafting those into something else, and then selling those for a profit. And that's exactly what I've been doing for many, many years in the game. Probably seven to nine years, somewhere around there, I've lost count. Um, but since the end of December, when I finally got back into the game after a long pause, I decided to track all the trades that I make. And as you can see here, there's a decent amount of trades. There's over 150 uh, different items that I've bought and sold over the past couple months. And uh, with all these trades, I track whether I buy it or if I sell it. I keep track of the item name, uh, the quantity, how much of the item I bought, at which rate I bought it, and the total value of that trade, uh, and then day and day of the week. Um, so these are just the raw inputs that I, I take to just make this entire sheet and all the, the charts here. Uh, so it's nothing too crazy, but uh, for example, if you know, I can see different items like wood. I can see that, okay, I bought it for around 11.4 wood to one steel, um, which isn't isn't bad. I think you can get around 15 wood to one steel. So I can track uh, different rates at which I buy the same, same goods. So you can see one time I bought it for 8.6, which isn't great. One time I bought it for 20 wood to one steel and it kind of just varies. So it's a good way to keep track of that kind of thing. Uh, especially if you buy a lot of items all the time and you, you can lose track of it. Uh, so looking at the fun stuff, looking at the tables, uh, since the end of December, you can see I've bought a total of two, two million steels worth of items and sold around 1.4 uh, steels worth of items, which obviously isn't great. Uh, there is a lot of restocking that I've done in this period since the last time I played a while ago. Uh, so that accounts for a lot of these expenses um, being much higher than the revenue that I bring in by selling stuff. Um, but I'm not really concerned about that because now I know I'm in a good place, have everything stocked up and ready to go. Uh, so December was kind of slow because I was getting back into the game, figuring out rates. January, I really uh, got the ball rolling and, and got trades going and really restocked on stuff, especially after I finally completed the Christmas uh, different quests and challenges to get the elf, which helps with trading and crafting. Uh, and then February, I've slowed down a little bit just because I've been busy, but hopefully in the coming months, I will be able to see an increase in the revenue that I'm bringing in, which is this green bar here. Uh, so that's kind of what it looks like in, in terms of different quantities that I buy and sell every month. Now diving a little bit deeper into it. So looking at the net value of stuff that I buy uh, in steel, I only I use steel as main currency. A lot of people use rifle ammo or whatever, but I 
think steel is, is best because everybody takes it. Um, so I've spent the most steel on rich chowder, on fish, then deadly nightshade, fatty meat, and you can kind of see a little bit of a pattern here if you play the game, um, especially when we look at net value of items that I sell. Uh, where I make a lot of my revenue is from crafting energizing potions, uh, and also detoxifying potions, and also rope. And those are the top three things that I make my revenue from. And that's no surprise if you know what's going on here. So from the Christmas event, you can get Santa card, not an elf card. And with that, you can, in a certain month of the game and year, um, you can trade five fish to one lazy elf. And then you can feed those elves with rich chowder. And then once you do that, then the elves will bring you herbs. And these herbs can make uh, energizing potions and detoxifying potions and also nettle, which you can craft into rope, which takes forever. Uh, but it's still obviously worth it, as you can see here, even if it takes the majority of my time. Um, so that's kind of one thing that I've been focusing on because I, I know it's profitable uh, the way that I do it and the way that I find different things at. So that's kind of what I focus on. Um, now just other some other tables here that we have. Uh, so number of trades per month, I, it kind of reflects what we saw in that first chart. Um, but you can see here that uh, most of the time I, I buy items when I make trades. Um, it's not as often that I sell items and that's kind of what I'm running into now, especially because the winter event is done and not as many people are online. So it's a little bit harder to sell uh, the things that I'm selling. Um, but I think that's that's okay. All you need to do is find one big seller, one big buyer, and uh, you're good to go. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like from number of trades per month. And then finally, I thought this would be a little bit more insightful, but it's it's not really all that useful. Um, most trades by day of the week. I guess the only useful thing to pull out of this is <laughs> maybe I don't have, or may, maybe I have a little bit more extra time on Mondays and Tuesdays to play the game. Uh, and that's kind of when I buy a lot of my items. That's when I, I spend more time to be on uh, commercial chat in game and, and buy stuff from players. So that's about that. Um, and then finally, we have two more charts here. Uh, this is broken down by quantity sold or quantity bought or quantity sold, um, not the value of it. So as you see here, uh, there's similar things where I've bought over a million fish, a million wood, uh, a decent amount of deadly nightshade, and a bunch of other herbs, and also fatty meat because that's how I get my water. Uh, I made a video, if you're interested, on how you turn fatty meat into salted meat and then trade that salted meat through the cursed coin uh, to get water or even deadly nightshade, turn that deadly nightshade into poison, and then get wash powder. Um, so it's, it's a decent loop there that starts with fatty meat so if you want to get more information on how to profit making that then I have that video um, basically these are the things that I buy in the most quantity um, so the most parcels fish is a little bit of a pain because it takes a while to trade that because each trade is limited to one minute if you buy the premium version of the game um, and each trade is limited to only 10,000 items um, and then these are the items that I, I sell the most in quantity. So energizing potions are at the top there. Uh, unfortunately, rope is too, because that, that makes me money. Uh, but it just takes forever to turn the wood. Uh, turn the wood that I buy from over here into thread, and then turn that thread into rope. Um, so it's, it's a bit of a hassle. Sometimes I sell the nettle because I just don't want to deal with it. But uh, again, that does bring in money, so I, I shouldn't be too much about making rope um, and then I sell a bunch of other medicines which I've done in the past uh, I have a spreadsheet a whole bunch of a uh, whole bunch of good good things in here uh, with all my different rates that uh, make sense to me doesn't mean it makes sense to you I might be able to go into this in more detail in another video but that's that's for another video um, and that's uh, that's about it so I'm hoping to expand to this list uh, sometime in the future, maybe do this every two or three months, maybe every four months, depending on if I'm busy. Um, but if you think that this video was interesting to kind of get a view into what it's like being a bulk trader in Dayar, um, 
then feel free to subscribe if you want to see a similar video in the future. Uh, because I, I do expect to do another video as I continue playing through the months. Uh, just another update video. Um, but yeah, that's uh, that's about it. So if you like this video, then uh, feel free to check out the other videos that I have. Um, feel free to let me know in the comments what you think. If you have any suggestions or ideas. Uh, I'm hoping to make more videos about how to uh, profit by buying raw resources and crafting them into uh, different goods and then sell those goods for a profit because I, I don't think a lot of people know exactly what's profitable nowadays. A lot has changed in the past few years so it is kind of hard to f know exactly what's profitable and what's not and uh, the different rates and sensitivity analysis that you have to do to make sure that you're making money. But uh, yeah, with all that being said, I think that's uh, that's about it. So. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.